Welcome. Okay, so next up, we'll be having a panel of three people who are going to talk about data center market trends and investment perspectives. The moderator, Jonathan Atkin, is Managing Director, RBC Capital Markets, and he will be taking along his guests as I guess. Yes, please welcome Jonathan Atkin, the moderator of the next panel, and his panel members. <laughs> going to be to um, essentially uh, um, ask questions of our, of our colleagues Patrick and Eric from uh, Evo Switch, now, now uh, Iron Mountain. Um, maybe just a little bit of background first, though, um, in terms of where you've been in the industry um, uh, prior, prior to your current role, starting with Eric. Yeah, so we uh, built Evo Switch for the last uh, 10 years in, uh, in Amsterdam. Um, we realized that uh, we're doing well, but, um, you know, we have to join a bigger company so that's what we've done in uh, May last year so since May 25th we are Iron Mountain data centers Europe now and I'm in the business for 10 years so Patrick welcome thank you Jonathan Patrick van der Wild a commercial director uh, Iron Mountain data centers for Europe so on the Iron Mountain payroll since May 25th Great. Um, so give, given the background of Iron Mountain, um, I think it might be useful for the audience. It's a, a document storage company. They've been quite active in uh, evaluating ways to diversify beyond their core business into um, other areas that can leverage their, their existing enterprise relationships. Data centers has been a big focus of theirs. Um, I'd like to maybe ask either of you to give a little bit of background on, on how that company, which didn't have originally an IT focus, um, got into Europe and, and kind of what, it, what is their overall strategy? Yeah, so the original business of Iron Mountain is document management, data storage and recovery, things like that. In the business for more than 60 years, um, but no data centers yet. So but I think it's a logical step to do data center, the digital world, etc. So it's all about data. So three years ago, Iron Mountain decided to step into the data center world, digital world, and spent more than $2 billion of, of capital uh, buying data centers. So what does their footprint currently look like um, in terms of announced uh, expansions or acquisitions? Where do they currently operate assets? So we're right now we're in 12 regions in three continents in the world. So uh, America, we've got nine regions, uh, London, Amsterdam and Singapore in, uh, in Asia. Uh, we're looking at flat mostly in Europe. So uh, we're based in London and Amsterdam right now. And the next step will be Frankfurt. We, there will be some news shortly. And then we will go to Paris and um, some in other interesting areas, I think, in, uh, in Europe. Um, perhaps a uh, question for, for, for Patrick, if you, if you will, but just the, the overall demand environment that you see for the industry, um, obviously, th there could be kind of Netherlands perspective where you're, where you're serving regional, even global requirements. But as you've talked about these other markets, such as, such as London, Paris, Frankfurt, uh, more from a European-wide perspective, how do you anticipate um, um, the leasing trends going forward for, for the industry and perhaps for your company in particular and how you might differentiate? Now about uh, demand for data centers, maybe it's good to go one step back into our amount of demand for data centers. Uh, like Eric said, the company is almost 70 years old. Um, we have coverage in 54 countries, and um, our amount is the clear market leader for information storage for, let's say, highly regulated industries. So airlines, uh, manufacturing, uh, medical, um, and it's the largest data storage company in the world. And now over time, um, it, it's one of the best trusted brands in the world. And our client base, which consists of more than 220,000 customers, starts to expect more in terms of digitalization and data and the use of data and the leverage the data. So for that reason, the digital transformation was initialized and uh, the data center is, is a big part of it. Um, and, and part of the reasons doing data centers is, uh, apart from the customer base we have, is a strong demand that's anticipated now when you go down to Amsterdam and to, to FLAP. We all know the absorption graphs and the supply that we currently have in Amsterdam and Frankfurt, London and Paris and the, and the anticipated demand. 
It will remain very strong. Um, it will be explored in the in the in the I think in the ways we saw in the last few years. Um, but there may be also be some more room for new for constructors like uh, Sill and Leesbeck, like we did in London and Singapore, but Credit Suisse. In some markets, it's, it's hard to get land capacity and power. And when you do a sale and lease back, you have short time to market. You're in the middle of a relevant city like Singapore or Amsterdam. So that's something we may see more in the near future. So I think this morning there was an interesting presentation from CBRE um, talking about the, uh, the major European markets and how cloud demand uh, represents essentially 80%. Um, is that a number that uh, surprises you? Does it kind of reflect what you're expecting in, in your particular business or in the markets where you operate? So 80%? Eight 80%. Percent? Eight zero. So for co-location or? For, for cloud service providers, so the big hyperscalers. Yeah, as that's what we see as well. So I think what you see in general in the market is that, you know, you used to have a, a wholesale or retail business, so in the data center business, right? And now you see that it's mixed. So everybody wants to do retail and wholesale at the same time because I think wholesale and cloud, cloud particular is, uh, is the main business at the moment. So everybody is building hyperscale cloud-ready data centers at the moment in Europe and other parts of the world. Anything to add, Patrick? Uh, well, the percentage surprises me at least, yeah. Um, so think, thinking about the existing customer base back before the acquisition, you know, you had an, an interesting position in the market being Netherlands-based, operating in this market, competing against uh, pan-European, even even global global players, regional players. Um, how has that kind of affected your thoughts on, on how to grow the business going forward? Yeah, so I think we were the only uh, local data center provider focusing on international business. So, of course, you have other Dutch data center providers, but they were more like for the local business. So we were competing against uh, Equinix, Interaction, Digital, and we did quite well. Uh, 2016 was the best year, 2017 even better. But I think in five years time from now, I think uh, you know everybody will be absorbed by all the big ones. So there will be a couple of big ones in Europe, in the rest of the world, you know, uh, you know, doing the co-location business because a big part will be wholesale, cloud, and you have to be big. You have to be, you know, you have to be have a lot of capita capital to uh, to buy companies to build bigger, like we did so far. Yeah. So we had to join a bigger, a bigger company. There's no other way. Um, the Amsterdam market. Um, you know, has seen a lot of activity with, with land purchases. Cyrus One's publicly referenced, uh, you know, one, one recently, um, Agaport A7, and, um, you know, the other, other players that you mentioned, one, one of which you mentioned earlier, kind of developing in, into this market. Um, um, and you, you also see kind of a, a mix of, of single tenant, large land plots meant for one or two CSPs, and then closer in, more, more of kind of the interconnect retail model. Um, how do you see this market, this market specifically, the Netherlands, developing um, 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 as it pertains to your business? Uh, I so think I'll, I'll start with He's Patrick. Looking at yeah. me, but yeah. again, um, I think in Amsterdam we all we we all together managed to to build out a, a fantastic ecosystem over the course of let's say twenty years, and the snowball is getting bigger and bigger, and you see the new entrants coming in. Um, in terms of retail, um, and it's all about connectivity, tax-friendly, uh, multi, well-educated people, nice place to live, and I think those identical factors are also the basis for, let's say, the hyperscalers. Maybe a different order. So um, my guess is that those two separate developments really support each other and make the make the snowball even bigger. Uh, so we, so. Netherlands is a small country, right? So what you see in the smaller countries like Netherlands, Belgium, and uh, the Scandinavia countries is that you see the hyperscalers building their own data centers there because it's tax friendly, you know, they can get land and power cheap. And they mix that with co-location like they do in Holland, right? So in Amsterdam, the bigger hyper the hyperscalers also use a lot of co-location uh, with, uh, with us with and the other data center providers. But in the bigger countries in Europe, you see that they only use co-location so far. 
like in Germany, for example. And uh, what you see is that they use a lot of co-location. They will keep using co-location, especially in the Netherlands. So I'm going to um, maybe ask one more question about market trends, and then we'll have a little bit of time for audience questions in case um, uh, in case there are any. Um, we also kind of titled this investment perspective, so that might be an area where, where I can contribute depending on, on audience interest. But as we think about 2019 and, and market trends, what, uh, what overall themes uh, do you predict for the, for the coming year? So what you see is that you know, especially American and Asian data center providers will wanna rule the world, right? Um, you see Cyrus One coming into the Dutch market. We have seen um, companies from Germany and uh, Japan, so coming into, uh, and Iron Mountain, of course, coming to the Netherlands. I think that trend will go on. And in the end, you know, the, wor the world will be run by a couple of big Chine uh, Chinese, Japanese, or American data center providers, so that will keep on. Uh, for the next year, I think. And we will see more of the, the Chinese platforms landing in, uh, in Europe, the Netherlands. Yep. I think the scale of the individual, individual data centers will get bigger and bigger. Mm. Just the last week, we, uh, we did see 750 square meter data center. And no American was surprised about it anymore. They're building way bigger and it's hundreds of megawatts that's going to be the standard. Audience questions, if there are any. In the back. Uh, back here, could you go to the gentleman over there? <coughs> While he's passing the mic, I guess a question for you then around, um, you know, you, you have redevelopment, you purchased enterprise sites, you're doing greenfield. As, as we think about cost to develop or how quickly you can develop, um, are all the tools, you know, there in, in, in terms of understanding the cost and how to quickly do it, or are there improvements that you see in from a process standpoint or from a cost standpoint on how to um, get capacity online and start selling? Yeah, so first of all, it depends on the market you w you're going to go in, right? So in some markets, there are no EV switches to buy anymore. There's nothing. So you have to do greenfield or brownfield. Uh, I think in, um, in, in, uh, in Amsterdam and Frankfurt, there are not a lot of companies to buy, so you start greenfield or brownfield. Um, if you look at Amsterdam and Frankfurt, the biggest problem we have right now is getting uh, power, right? So the power grid is becoming a problem. Probably Sign Grove uh, talked about this this morning, I guess, because this is one of the things, you know, we have to talk about in the Netherlands with the local government, with the federal government, because that will be a problem. It's the same problem in Frankfurt, for example. So it depends on the market, what we do. Capital is not a problem. That's what we have. Question. Yeah, this is sort of tangentially related to data centers, but more to Iron Mountain's business. Um, I'm wondering to what extent you see Iron Mountain and potentially other data center companies investing in the digitalization of analog data and feeding that into kind of a big data-driven or data and analytics-driven business model where a lot of these legacy companies that you've been serving in insurance and regulatory and whatever are looking at that data that hasn't ever become digital as a potential asset that would impact the value of the valuation of their business and, and their ability to build new businesses. Yeah, um, maybe it's good um, talking about digital transformation, which data center is part of. Uh, we've all got a kind of digitization and there's also kind of, of an initiative that's called Insight. And don't ask me any <coughs> follow-up questions on this because I don't know too much about it. But that's the case. Um, our amount of working together with, uh, with Google using machine learning, artificial intelligence. And they made a case with a, um, an oil company and they took all their 50, 60, 70 years old information, um, let the intelligence see what the fingerprints were and are and what the smartest combination were that creates new data, new revenues, new oil, fi oil fields. And that's, that's the kind of the way forward, one of the ways forward that our mountain will use the information for going into the future. Time for one more quick one, otherwise we'll uh, adjourn. One final question. Well, I guess that was it. So right. thank you very much, Erik Boonstra, Patrick van der Wild, and our moderator, Jonathan Atkin. There you are. Small token of appreciation. Erik. There you go. Okay.
So yes, are you ready for the last round of presentations before we go to the closings? And we will be having enabler for hybrid and multi-cloud solutions with eShelter Innovation Lab. We have two speakers ready standing there. Ludwig Volker, the Senior Vice President of Sales, and Tuan Nguyen, the Director of Business Development in Cloud Platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tuan and Ludwig. Good afternoon. Um, thanks for joining our session. Uh, we have split it between uh, my colleague uh, Toan and myself. Um, and we would provide, like to provide you with an update on, on eShelter. So we are the new entrant into the Dutch market. The company is born uh, more than 18 years ago and still headquartered in, in Frankfurt where the majority of the shares were sold to NTT uh, almost um, three years ago. The core business of eShelter is building and operating data centers, which we typically plan and design ourselves. But it's not just about building and operating great data centers these days. It's obvi <coughs> sorry, obviously also about having the right connectivity uh, available for the customers to interconnect as well as um, the right partner ecosystems. The difference and the big differentiator with what uh, eShelter does is, is off? Okay. The big differentiator is our innovation lab where my colleague Tor will be speaking about in a couple of minutes. Eshelter Sorry. Uh, Eshelter is the market leader in Germany and has expanded uh, throughout the German-speaking countries over the last 18 years and is now entering um, the Amsterdam market where we are opening, opening a data center campus with almost uh, 40 megawatts of capacity. The first phase will be ready in April this year, which will provide um, in total 10 megawatts of um, capacity to our customers, which consists of hyperscalers, connectivity and other enterprises looking for high quality data center capacity. <coughs> Amsterdam is one of our key markets where the existing eShelter customers um, from our existing markets, especially hyperscalers, have strong demand for growth. And we are also, besides the markets we are currently operating in, expanding into London, where we build a big campus uh, close to uh, close to Dagenham, and um, also move into other markets such as Madrid and South Africa going forward. The evolution in data center is is key, and eShelter developed from a provider of building um, high secure and resilient data centers through a threading connectivity and cloud services really to a ecosystem of companies um, which allows our customers access to all partners and customers within one facility. So our customers in the space of um, digital value chains are enabled to connect to all the customers and partners they want to, uh, they want to cooperate with under one roof within our facilities. So where we had previously uh, strong conversations with people like facility managers and data center managers, um, this now changed where we are talking to the IT departments and really the people who are managing the data. Data is key uh, for our customers and this is probably the most important uh, and well
valuable good for customers these days. And with this, I would like to hand over to my colleague Tuan, who will be exploring the Innovation Lab, which is really a differentiator on what eShelter does within the colocation space and within what uh, data centers offer in Europe these days. Thanks. All right, thank you, Volker. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Okay, I have a double thing. Okay, let me move this one. Is it still okay? Um, yeah, thanks a lot, Volker. And uh, as Volker um, said, so I will be talking about the Innovation Lab. I think this is a component which is uh, different than uh, other data center operator do in, in the European market. And uh, before uh, we talk about the uh, um, Innovation Lab, so obviously I want to give you some, some drivers behind it. Uh, you have seen a lot of uh, uh, facts and figures today, uh, but uh, no surprise, data is uh, new oil. And obviously without data, there won't be any AI applications, machine learning, and uh, many other uh, applications, right? And uh, the good news uh, for us in, in, in this room and uh, at, at this conference, everything is growing, which is related to our business, right? Traffic is growing, data is going uh, to grow, and uh, also a lot of more workloads will be deployed into the data center, right? And that's why I think everybody uh, in, in every, everyone in this room is excited about the business, right? It's good news for us, uh, we are growing. Um, and um, so at the same time, you know, with a lot of growth and with a lot of uh, new emerging technologies, I think you know, this, uh, this uh, question comes up. So for a lot of CIOs and uh, chief uh, digital officer, I think, it's, uh, it's really a tough time for them these days, right? A lot of new emerging technologies, a lot of new options, and a lot of new partnerships. And uh, so therefore, so obviously, there's a lot of uh, headache also, right? Nobody wants to be in this role, I, I, I guess, right? So um, a lot of uh, opportunities and, and questions. And so we want to help you know, CIOs and CDOs with the innovation lab, right? Within our uh, data center facilities. So what, what, what is it? And uh, before I, I jump into you know, our concept, so I wanna give you, you know, or you know, the, the drivers behind uh, you know, the Innovation Lab and why we, we started to introduce Innovation Lab uh, a year ago in, in Frankfurt. So first of all, uh, I think everybody in this room can agree, uh, these days if you want to have like a strong IT, you need to have, uh, you need to have a strong data center platform with uh, specific IT capabilities, right? Server storage and all of the uh, fancy technologies that, that we all know of uh, today. But actually, our customers, they are interested into a digital uh, business model, right? So everybody wants to become the next Amazon, the next Uber, the next Airbnb, and really without you know, owning any assets and at the same time creating new revenue streams. And, uh, and I strongly believe in order to create new, uh, a new business model or digital business model, you have to apply sophisticated technologies like blockchain, like big data, like IoT, like uh, augmented reality and, and other stuff. Um, the question is, you know, for, for a lot of the enterprises and our customers, uh, we have a lot of choices. So what is the right technology for, for, for me as, as, as an enterprise to, to convert my existing business into a, a new digital business, right? So there are a lot of, there are a lot of questions for, to, to the enterprises, right? In terms of who are the right partners, technology questions, availability, connectivity, and so on and so forth, right? And I've seen a lot of new uh, you know, technologies coming up uh, during my, my IT journey. And uh, for enterprises, typically they want to you know, test it out and try it out before they really put it into production. And uh, this is where the uh, eShell Innovation Lab comes into play, right? So whenever enterprises and our customers have the questions, okay, how do I apply blockchain in the real world um, environment? How do I use artificial intelligence and machine learning? That's where we bring in the eShell Innovation Lab. So the Innovation Lab, so there are two, two ideas behind it. One is really collaborating with uh, technology partners, with systems integrators, and also startups. Right, so that's just important. So without our partner ecosystem, we wouldn't be able to, to prov prov provide the use cases in each of the emerging technology fields, right? So the idea behind is really to pre-package, to pre-deploy certain use cases in the, um, you know, in the blockchain space, in the IoT space, in the uh, big data space for, for enterprises to test it out you know, right away, right? without uh, 
um, really installing and buying the stuff, right? And uh, the photo on the left-hand side here, as you can see, that's a physical snapshot out of the innovation lab in Frankfurt, on our, in, um, in our Frankfurt One campus, right? And then the second idea behind the innovation lab is, since we're engaging with a lot of uh, technology companies, right, we want to also co-innovate with them, right? So really joining forces with our suppliers, with the hyperscalers, and then bringing in new services uh, for, for enterprises at, at the same time, right? So it's all about piloting POCs, test and dev, right, for enterprises and also co-innovation with our partners. So what's in it, right? So we have a rich ecosystem and uh, since uh, we have launched in, uh, Innovation Lab in Frankfurt, we managed to ramp up more than uh, 100 technology partners, systems integrators, and also the hyperscalers are involved, right? So we have a lot of uh, use cases that can be used and, and tested out uh, right away. Uh, it's a physical room, so we, we decided consciously to build into our um, data center a physical room where all of the different stakeholders can come together and really you know, explore the emerging technologies that are required for, for their business uh, transition, right? And then last but not least, you know, since uh, joining uh, with a lot of uh, partners, we're, we're also giving back a lot of um, knowledge and content to the community, right? So we're hosting a lot of meetups, uh, webcasts, and uh, running you know, boot camps and hackathons, right? So we want to make technology really tangible with the Innovation Lab uh, approach. Um, so within the Innovation Lab, it's a, it's a dedicated environment um, um, in, in our data center campus. So we provide networking capabilities, space, power and cooling. That's obviously our core business. And then you know, together with uh, our other partners, we would then join forces and then bring you know, really um, uh, the, the eventual technology pieces together, right, for enterprises to, to test it out, right? For instance, in this case, this is a drawing how, you know, uh, enterprises could evaluate and test out hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environment, right? So everything is pre-deployed in the innovation lab, and it's quite easy for us to plug and play <laughs> and, you know, um, let customers and enterprises to test out, like, you know, Alibaba Cloud, Amazon Cloud, NDT Cloud, or whatsoever, right? So physically, it's deployed in the innovation lab and is pre-configured and, and uh, pre-deployed. Yeah? So uh, it's quite important for us to have a healthy uh, partner ecosystem. Um, I want to give you, um, you know, a specific example in the context of co-innovation, right? So uh, one pillar is really collaboration with you guys or with partners, and then on the other hand side, we want to also test out you know, augmented reality, for instance, uh, in, in our case. So we decided consciously to build out a Lego model of our Frankfurt One campus, right? And, uh, and uh, we, we have already started the project. Uh, you know, this, uh, this campus, Lego campus is already in, in Frankfurt. And so what we did was basically we augmented um, the physical layout and the physical model with some AR and VR capabilities, right? And so the goal was basically if we would go to conferences or you know, bring, we would bring uh, this model to maybe partner uh, events and customer events and give them a tangible example of you know, what does our uh, campus look like and you know, how, what, what does it feel like to, to have uh, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality in real life. Right, so we would combine, and we did it with some some partners um, that, that are pretty strong in this space in uh, in Frankfurt, yeah? and that applies also into other technology areas, right? Not only AR, VR. We have partners where we run internally blockchain POCs or IoT POCs, and, uh, and so this is something that we can also offer to to enterprises for them to to try out and test. Um, and I think I, I did mention some, some facts and figures, and uh, I think a lot of the, the partners and you guys here in the room are certainly relevant to us, right? So I would like to invite you to join uh, our Innovation Lab ecosystem. We have a broad set of uh, mature technology companies. Uh, we have ramped up our startup ecosystem as well, and together with this ecosystem, we you know, run a lot of uh, events, conferences, and generated a lot of new business also for, for, for those partners, right? And I think that's really key. Um, snapshot of the logos, uh, so I think a lot of the logos are well known in the ecosystem and I think this is really important for our enterprises because when they come to the innovation lab, they expect that everything is available, everything is set up, everything is really pre-installed and pre-configured and they can restart with their pilot and POC tomorrow, right? Because typically they would have to buy and order and racking and stacking and a lot of effort, right? But in the innovation lab, a lot of the stuff is already uh, available and uh, pre-installed. Um, 
we want to bring you know, the Innovation Lab concept into other regions as well. So I, I did mention that we started the Innovation Lab in, in Germany. That's our home turf, I would say. But uh, yeah, so we are bringing the Innovation Lab also to, to, to the Amsterdam market and other uh, market, and uh, even to the Asian market, right? Because some of the, uh, our enterprise customers, their footprint in Europe, in Americas and also in APEC, and they are also requesting us to run POCs across uh, different countries, across different regions, right? And the idea again is if a Daimler comes to us or an Audi or whatever enterprise that is, right, you know, they can tap into the emerging technologies right away and even across uh, the globe, right? Um, so you may ask yourself, so how come, you know, <laughs> eShelf is also providing uh, some innovation labs uh, in the APEC region? Um, and as uh, Volker said, so as of, uh, 2015, we're also part of the uh, NTT um, uh, ecosystem, which is uh, quite a broad uh, set of different uh, business units and, and capabilities, uh, which is great for us. And um, so with that, I wanna, I wanna conclude uh, the presentation. Um, the Innovation Lab, again, is really a platform for us to partner with uh, technology companies, with um, hyperscalers and the enterprise customers that we have in our facilities and data center campuses, right? And therefore, uh, my call to action to you guys is if you feel you have the right and relevant, interesting piece of technology, come to us, please talk to us, you know, and, and really bring your use cases together with us uh, to the uh, local and the enterprise market. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much for this presentation. Perhaps there are questions.